Okay. Thank you very much. No conflict of interest. And uh, I'm reporting on a patient survey which we have conducted over the last maybe yeah, six to nine months. And uh, the participating organizations were the Lederhose Disease Block, and from this you already see that it was a mixed survey on Dupuytren's disease and Lederhose. And uh, it was really initiated by the Lederhose uh, group, uh, Gary Manley, and praise goes to him for taking initiative on that, and the International Dupuytren Society just jumped on the bandwagon and joined in with adding more Dupuytren questions. And the other organizations also helping uh, were the British Dupuytren Society, the German Society, and of course uh, the Dupuytren <coughs> Foundation in the US. What we were trying to assess is uh, both diseases and specifically the quality, the perceived quality of treatments and the perceived quality of consultation, the effect of lifestyle, specifically smoke and drinking, and uh, look at related diseases. And we also uh, try to see whether there are country-specific differences. And uh, of course, we wanted to assess the patient's needs in the survey, which is probably the most difficult thing. The method was an online survey, uh, and we put effort into making it simple. So it was, uh, it took less than five minutes to fill it out, although uh, as we were tracking the time, some people took 15 minutes, but anyway, you could do it in less than five minutes. We had this, this survey globally. It was a global participation, so every country could, uh, uh, patients from all over the world could participate. We had two types of questionnaires, one in English and one in German, the questionnaires themselves were identical, just translated, so that we could merge the data afterwards if we wanted. And uh, the invitation to join uh, the survey went through the Lederhouse block, uh, through the various forums that the societies are running, and through the mailing list of the Dupuytren Foundation, which is a big one, and last not least, through some clinics in Germany where the uh, physicians invited patients to participate in the survey and we had a specific website address there. Altogether, we uh, probably approached about 10,000 patients and uh, received about 2,500 <coughs> responses. Now, th that's how they were, uh, how they are split across the world. So essentially, the contributions come from the US and from Europe, with some major contributions from Australia and Canada, and very few, but some from other countries. But in Europe, uh, naturally, uh, the biggest contributions, contributions were from the UK and from Germany due to the German questionnaire, and a few from other countries. Now, uh, let me have a look at the related diseases and effect of genders. <clears throat> the related diseases, you, we saw that 35% of the respondents had uh, Lederhose disease, and uh, that, that is a little bit overweight, but uh, remember that uh, it was the Lederhose block which also initiated this, uh, so we had to expect a lot of people having Lederhose, and uh, most of the uh, patients responding had Dupuytren disease. The uh, Dupuytren disease patients had a very frequently frozen shoulder and knuckle pads, which is also expected, and uh, we, we found relatively little IPP because uh, obviously we did not specifically approach that group of patients. They, they were not on our forums and they're not in the Dupuytren Foundation mailing. And we had 12% thyroid and 5% diabetes. I tried to find out what the average number would be to compare to, but I, I found it's impossible. I, I think it's more or less around the normal uh, distribution. I, I don't see anything significant there. Uh, on the gender influence, this is the typical picture which you probably have seen in other publications. 
a few things nevertheless to mention. This is age of onset. onset. This is not as usually published uh, age of treatment. So it shifted a little bit to the lower years. You can also see that uh, the male uh, are dominating even in the group 10 to 19. So th this might indicate that uh, the genetics uh, play an important role while men get this disease earlier. Because in, in the 10 to 19, probably occupation or, or lifestyle hasn't had much effect by then, but still you can see a difference between male and female. <coughs> the other thing which might be interesting is uh, you see a 10-year difference uh, in the peak between male and female, but that's an artifact. That's really due to the grouping, 10 years groups of age groups, and you see that when you look at the average, the average is, whoops. Oh, okay. So, okay, then I really have to hurry up. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, uh, you, you see there's four years difference, and I'll go quickly through. <laughs> so, uh, the effect of smoking is interesting. Uh, this is just for f female smoking, non-smoking, and you see that once Initially, there's not much of a difference, but one, once you had about 10 years of smoking probably, then bang, there's a big effect on, of smoking in, on the onset of the disease. We did not find much on, in the alcohol range, so we, we tried several uh, versions, but if you read it horizontally, you see, don't see much of a difference whether you drink nothing or less or more than two glasses. We saw a major effect of smoking, and specifically in the, how does that work? Anyway, yeah. So in here, you see, if there's no family history, we see a strong effect of seven years of smoking, not smoking, and, and also for women, similarly. So uh, the effect is much stronger for the group of patients with no family history, and on the right side, you, you see the number of patients responding, and you also see that you have to start with a large number of patients if you want to drill down. You know, we, we start with more than 2,000 patients, and if you go uh, into female not smoking with definitely no family history, you end up with 23. Okay, so quality of consultation, I skipped the next one but we see major differences in the countries. So the, uh, obviously, uh, and surprisingly, relatively good in Germany, uh, pretty bad in Australia, we have to do something about that. The <laughs> International Society <laughs> can't help on that, but maybe we should start an International Society on that uh, in, in Australia next, uh, as a next step. But uh, there's a quite some variation, obviously, and uh, also in the US, uh, a uh, high number of dissatisfied patients, and there are 900 patients from the US, so the numbers are not that bad, uh, statistically. Okay, what we really wanted to see was, was quality of treatment, and you see that as an example of fasciectomy, and obviously, uh, and not surprisingly, you could ra rate from one to 10, and the favorite ones were one, five, and 10. That's not surprising. But if you look at the treatments, then you see considerable differences between fasciectomy, PNF, collagenase, and uh, also radiotherapy doing pretty well, steroid injection not that well. Verapamil is just a cream, an ointment, uh, which we considered as not being very effective, and it's also reflecting in the survey. <coughs> now, uh, you see that we have relatively high number of PNFs, and uh, that's probably due to the involvement of the Dupuytren Foundation, because many of Charlie's patients were in there. Okay, uh, patients need and comments. <laughs> I think I have to refer you to the book chapter, <laughs> which we'll publish. So, but I would, would like to add a last one uh, from a patient, a comment. This is the t disease you want to get. It's a bit inconvenient, 
but it doesn't kill you and it won't limit what you can do unless you let it. Okay, thank you. Sorry about taking too much time.